So when I did the Weight Watchers, um, I told my sister, as long as she prepares the food, I'm, I'll do it with her. Now, we did the program, and I want to say that at some point, I kept on thinking like, oh, the reason I'm not losing more is because I plateaued or because like I'm pushing the system. Like, you know, they say you can have like one apple and I chose the biggest apple. So that's why I didn't lose more weight. I always blamed myself. Mm. Um, and I also remember like as a younger girl gaining weight at a certain point, like I had, didn't have issues, but around fifth, sixth grade, like all of a sudden weight came on. Um, that's and common, by the way, like if you got your period around that time, just saying. Right. Which is something that I discovered literally on my own, like with my own daughter, um, about a year or two ago, like she started to bulk up a little bit and I almost started freaking out. And then I'm like, wait, this happened to me. So there must be something to it. And I did some research and I found that research that shows that, um, I think a girl has to be about a hundred pounds before she gets her period something along those lines, but that it's a natural hormonal response in her body that it's in preparation for puberty, that it's a normal thing for a girl, I think to put on 20, 25 pounds. Mm -hmm. something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So what was happening to me was normal, but then because of our culture, I feel like the focus on what I was eating propelled me into like a bad relationship with food where um, I felt like, you know, I was like perpetually the one that like would be like teased, like I'd walk down the street with a book and a bag of potato chips, you know, and those kind of jokes, they're, they're like, they're cute, but they're really not cute. And um, it just further alleviates you from like where your natural um, inclination would be. Like maybe I really did want to stop eating that bag of chips or that bar of chocolate or the delicious food, whatever it might be. But when it's someone else telling you, you, you then are shutting off like your internal cues. Um, and I want to say that even before I met like intuitive eating as a, an approach, after I gave birth, um, to one of my kids about six years ago, um, I really had just a lot of different issues postpartum, like my body felt broken. And I said, you know, I, I don't have the wherewithal to, to exercise the way I should. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, you know what, I'm just going to go walking down Ocean Parkway where I live for as long as I can without pushing myself. Like I'm just going to, whether it's five minutes or six minutes or seven minutes, when my body tells me to stop, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to go home. And I'm not going to like let society tell me that I'm not doing anything. Um, and I started thinking, I just started thinking and realizing, you know, like I bought a bagel. Like, I feel like I need to finish the bagel because I bought it. I paid for it. Um, I should be finishing it. Right. We just finish what we eat. And then I said, but wait, like three quarters of the way through, I'm like, Oh, I don't really, I'm really not in the mood of the rest of it. And I started just like tuning into myself just a little bit. Um, and I also realized something else, which I think really is kind of a gateway. It was the gateway for me being ready to approach intuitive eating was I also realized that unless I came to accept my body as is, I will never lose weight. Now that was my original goal, right? My goal was body acceptance. So this way I can do a diet properly. Mm -hmm. and I kept this in my head, this thought of like, you need to work on just really being happy with the way you are. And then hopefully you'll get to a point where you could um, learn healthier eating habits and hopefully lose weight. Mm -hmm. And that was my initial, really my initial thoughts. So being armed with that, I really have avoided diets for many years. Like, thankfully, I'm so grateful that I don't have the diet baggage that most women of our generation have. Um, it's it, it, that 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 part of intuitive eating that like you know rejecting diet mentality is was easier for me i was all too happy to find other people that actually agree with my way of thinking mm -hmm. um so how i actually found intuitive eating as an approach hey, one thing uh, I you for a sec. when you uh were you just like a very confident person that you were able to say like you know because a lot of people internalize like if dieting isn't working, then something's wrong with me, as opposed to like, this doesn't feel right in my body. Let me listen to my body and change. Like, were, are you just naturally confident or you were developing that confidence then? So I think, um, I just, I think I just was like, just feeling hopeless about the dieting. I was like, 
After each kid I had, I gained more weight. I also had gestational diabetes in some of my pregnancies. Um, and, you know, it was like, I didn't like the baggage that came along with being overweight. I always felt like it was this heavy cloud that followed me around everywhere. Um, you know, there were people in my life who would say, oh, you're so pretty. You know, if you would just lose weight like so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And I tied in my, yeah. my whole like self-esteem was actually tied into like my body size. And if I would see someone that was heavier than me, I would feel so bad for that girl or that woman and think, and say, oh, I'm, I'm so grateful. Like I'm a thinner fat, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I just, just also on a practical level, this is also something that I've spoken a lot about on my page to about two years ago when I started like just verbalizing this is the, the shopping, the lack of shopping abilities. I love clothing. I love shopping. And it was always so upsetting to me that, you know, I gained five pounds or I gained whatever amount of weight, you know, after having kids. And then I, there was nothing for me to buy. And um, I think that. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> okay. Um, that that is really like, I, I'm still frustrated by that. I'm, I'm so happy that like our community has made progress, whether, you know, whether it's like the firm community making more firm clothing and even the secular world, there's more clothing available. But that shame of having to wear dowdy clothing, you know, that's, that is not really designed for a 20 year old or a 25 year old or a 30 year old, you know, it's, it's not, it's not, doesn't make you feel pretty. You know, everyone wants to feel pretty regardless of their size. Right. Um, um, we have a baby here joining us. Give me one second. 